Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our last class of data analysis. So, yesterday we looked at how to analyze data. We looked at how to get frequencies from the data that we have entered, how we can easily do that by the click of a button. We also looked at uh, how we can do cross tabulations by comparing one, uh, two or more values to each other. Today we are going to end up this course by just showing you some of the things that may be useful when entering data. One of the things that I'm going to show you is how to merge data. So merging of data comes in the instance where there are two or more people who are entering data separately. So suppose me and my colleague are collecting data from a certain area. I collect my data and my colleague collects his data. And at the end of the day, we want to put the data together so that we can analyze it. How can we put this data together? The way we can do that is by merging the two data sets, what he has entered and what I have entered. And this is one of the things that I'm going to show you today. So I've created the same data set from yesterday. I've just split it into two. Uh, we have merge one, let me open it. And we're going to have merge two. So we'll try and merge these two together in one file. So this is mage one, as you can see on top here, mage one, which has got 30 responses. Then now I'm going to open mage two. Mage two is here and it's got 54 responses. So what I want to do is to put merge one and merge two together in one file. And at the end of the day, it should give us 84 responses. So how do we do that? So to do that, you can open either merge one or merge two. It doesn't matter which one you open. So I have my merge one opened here and I want to import the entries from merge two. So what I do is go on data here. Then I go on merge files. Then I say add cases. Then here where it says an external SPSS statistical data file, that's what I want to add. So I go here on browse. When I go on browse, it's taking me to the merge folder where I have merge one and merge two. Now this is already merge one, which I'm using. So what, which I want, what I want to add on is the second one, which is merge two. So I click merge two, the file which I want to add, and I say open. Then I say continue. Then it has brought me this window. Here if we didn't have any uh, unpaired variables would come here. I'll explain on what that means uh, soon enough. But since we have no unpaired variables, here are all our questions which have come here. And all you do is say, okay. Then our output window is going to tell us to say that command has been what? Executed. So if we go back to our merge one now, it should have 84 files because we have added the 30 which were here. And now the others have also been added. If you can see, even though we did the question, the QID, Starting from set one, starting from one, because in match two, it's at one, and they go down all the way until 84. Like that. So basically, that's how you can merge data. You can merge even more than two data sets. If you have three, four, five people collecting data, you just have to undergo the same procedure where you go on data, add uh, cases, choose where you save the other files, then you merge them and you have the full data set, and you can now analyze them together. So that's basically how you merge data. One thing you should know when it comes to the merging of data is that the, the, regardless of who's entering the data, here in the variable views, the variables must be set in the same way. So meaning when I set uh, the variables like I said here, I must give this file to the other people that will be collecting data or who will be entering data. So they can be using the same variable uh, commands to enter their data. If the variable commands are different, this is where that came in play, where it was asking us to say, are there any uh, different variables? Let me just show you that. So say image two, say okay. So if there were differences in variables from someone else's data set and my data set, it was going to come here on unpaired variables, showing that the, some variables which I'm about to enter here are unpaired to the, to the file which I'm actually using. So I'll choose what I want to do. If I want to add those unpaired variables, 
I'll click on the uh, left and paired variable and send it this side. If I don't want to add, I'll leave it out. But if you if you if you want to merge data, it's imperative that you use the same variable commands to merge data. So meaning whoever enter in data should all use the same data entry template to enter the data. The last thing that I'm going to show you is on the graphs. Yesterday we saw that SPSS provides graphs. Let me just give you a simple analysis of uh, use my ETO status. Get a chart. Let's use a bar chart for this. No, we can use a pie chart and you can say okay like that. When we get mito status, we have our table here which is showing us the statistics of mito status of how many were single, divorced, and married. And below here, we have a, bar uh, a pie chart, sorry, which is actually uh, interpreting the same information which is on this table. Now, if you just look at this pie chart, when it comes to presentation form, one of the advantages of SPSS is that the charts it produces are not as professional as other softwares would produce charts. For instance, uh, Microsoft Excel. So what I normally recommend is that after you have your data like this, if you want to put this in the chart for presentation purposes, you use Excel. And how can you do that? Simply you can do that by right clicking on the table and you just say copy. You copy this table and then you open your Excel file. I'll use a blank workbook and then you paste your Excel file here. like that and we have pasted our table this table is the same table that we had here in our output windows everything is the same so this is the same information that i'm going to use to reproduce the pie chart and all i have to do is highlight if i'm going to use frequencies i'll highlight what i want i'll say insert look for the pie chart here i can use the 3d pie chart and say okay now this looks much more better and much more professional than this one which was done in SPSS. And the other thing is that this one cannot be changed or customized in any way. Whereas in Excel, you can customize this. You can put labels if you want. You can say data labels. And to show you single, married, to show which color represents what. You can change the styling if you want like that. You can get percentages. You can do all sorts of... Uh, uh, ed editing with uh, with Microsoft Excel to put it in a way that you want. You can separate the two if you want to just show you a clear picture of, of of the responses. So basically, that's what I normally recommend. I normally recommend that people who are using uh, SPSS for graphs should export their tables to Microsoft Excel and use Excel for graphs. And look at this graph; it looks much more professional than the one in. Excel which cannot be edited. So for SPSS you have to take the graph as it is and paste it wherever you're pasting. But if you do it in Excel you can edit it according to customization. You can edit the chart title here. Maybe say oh not removing it completely. Let me put it back there. Say marital status. Marito's status. Like that. And you blabber the chart and this is a much more professional looking chart to put in your presentation or wherever you want to use the chart. It shows you the, the name of the segment and the percentage that it's taking up. So that's basically what I recommend. So we end here for a course of data analysis. Hope this course was beneficial to you and hope you learned a lot from this course. Thank you very much for being with us from the beginning of this course until the end. This is where we end. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. All the best in your future endeavors. Thank you.